just ask before I start, how many European game developers are here tonight? Put up your hand. How many European game developers are trying to raise money? Almost everybody. Okay. So my theme for tonight is all about the need for speed. So I've actually got a fair amount of number of slides, but I'm going to go through it quickly, and you should be able to digest it. Okay, who am I? As Dominic said, um, I'm in, in partner in London Venture Partners, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I've been advising investment in game companies for a long time in Europe, I've been in Canada. Um, up there, the logos of some of the companies I've advised, some of the companies I've invested in. And uh, I'll move on. So, London Venture Partners is a seed fund investing in the European game sector. Uh, we're investing you know, between so 100,000 to 500,000 euros in companies. Um, it's a small fund. We've been fortunate to invest in some pretty good companies. The first investment we made was Supercell, um, and that's gone really well. Um, so, um, and we, we started off actually investing our own money, and then last year we raised a fund. Uh, we, we bring it, brought in Nexon, Wargaming, and Dom Madrid, CEO of Zynga, in addition to the three of us investing in it as well. So where is the game sector headed? It's getting bigger. I mean, this is just some data. There's, there's all kinds of data out there, but you know, the, the theme is, is it's getting bigger. It's, you know, what is everybody doing on their smart devices? They're playing games. Where is all the money on smart devices? It's in games. These are the key disruptions. You know, there's been a massive change which is, has surprised a huge number of people. Uh, you know, people that were in console BC business can't believe how fast the business has, has transitioned to, mo to mobile. Um, I can't tell you the number of people who have literally fallen off their chair when they realized that Supercell's come along and eat, eaten their lunch because it's, it's, you know, Clash of Clans is probably the single biggest game in the world now on any platform. Business model from paid to free. Um, you know, a lot of indies complain about free, but you know what? It's here and it's here to stay, and it's it's generating massive amounts of, of revenue. Operations. You're not making games and just shipping them and say thank you very much. It's a it's a live operation, and that's where the real fun and the real um, revenue starts to begin. Small is the new big. You know, you've got companies like EA and Activision with thousands and thousands of employees. You know, a company like Supercell generating tons of revenue, and they've got 160 people. And it's, you, know, you, you look at revenue and profit on a per employee basis, the, I, I don't know any company like that in the world. And speed matters. Um, in fact, my, my, two, my three main things I tell companies is that hire the best people you can, move as fast as you can, and focus. Because that will increase the probability of success. So, you know, this whole thing about unicorns over here, you know, billion dollar companies, blah, 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 well, I look at, you know, we're looking for European gems, because unicorns actually don't exist, you know, in terms of real life, you know, what gems do. Um, so I'm going to just run a few examples in case people don't know the data. Um, Mojang with Minecraft is, you know, one of the most successful companies in the game sector. Um, they generate a lot of revenue, Microsoft bought them for a lot of money, and Notch is now the first billionaire in the game sector in Europe. Um, and that got accomplished in basically just over five years, and that's an amazing accomplishment. And that just shows you how quickly things are moving. King has been around a bit longer. Um, you know, they started off doing skill games, they pivoted to mobile, and thanks to Candy Crush, they became a, a massive company, and they had a, a, an IPO last year, and it's now a five billion market cap company. It created a billion dollar value for the founders. Unity, um, they've been around for a while as well. They're now the single biggest game engine in the world. They're actually one of the single biggest game platform and all kinds of things. Um, 
It was started by three guys, they have now 500 employees, they've got 18 offices around the world and 4 million registered users. Um, and they've, you know, they've got some great investors with uh, Sequoia and a few others. Supercell, um, a lot of people know about this. You know, Supercell didn't raise more than about $13 million um, and never raised another dime, which is very different from some of the companies over here raising hundreds of millions of dollars. And Supercell is way bigger than all of them. And that's one of the, the things that we like about Europe is people are more capital efficient and they're not looking to raise as much money. They're looking to see how they can generate revenue faster and, and not spend so much money. So what does all this mean for a game startup? Success should be defined by different things. It's, it's about how many DAUs are you getting? How much is your revenue? Or how big do you sell for? It's not about how much money you raise. You know, some people go and raise 20, 30 million dollars and go, wow, that's great. Well, you know, how many of those companies actually go on and actually fail? So, you know, think about that. These days, you know, massive success is possible in a very, very short period. I mean, from the time that we invested in Supercell to the time they had the $3 billion uh, deal with SoftBank was three years. You know, that's mind-blowing. Focus, 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 focus. Um, so many companies try and do too many things with too many people and do less, say no to more things. You know, one of the things that blew me away with Ilka's Supercell is his ability to say no to almost everything. And he was right every time. Um, speed matters. You know, we're looking to invest in, in teams that are going to move incredibly fast, make decisions fast, change things, whatever, do whatever it takes to be successful and, and you, know, you know, look to go as big as possible. Um, we're not looking to invest in lifestyle businesses. Um, we're looking for people who are going to swing for the fences. And, and that's what most VCs are looking for. Um, and that's what you should try to aim for. And capital efficiency, it, it matters. Um, I'm, I'm always surprised at the number of uh, pitches that we get, people who are looking to raise, have got nothing but a, a few pieces of paper and they want to raise $10 million. And I'm like, really? Um, you know, it's amazing what you can do these days with a million dollars or half a million dollars. Um, so you need to think about that. And the, uh, you know, something else is, is make games with massive potential, mass market, think big. Um, don't make games necessarily just because that's what the games that you want to make. Um, that's great if you want a, a nice lifestyle business, but don't expect investors to want to buy into that. You know, they are looking for big, big, big. Um, so if you end up launching a game or some games and you get some traction, then investors are going to call, acquirers are going to call, lots of people are going to call, you have lots of options. Any of these above, and, and you know, it changes things. But don't stop doing things, because then that's when you should actually start moving faster. Um, and that's you know, just what I'm saying there. You know. You know, particularly with a you know a free to play game, it's live. You keep updating it regularly, regularly. Um, and in one of the problems that's been in Europe is you know someone's had a massive successful game, but they that's all they ever had. They tried all kinds of things and they end up becoming a one hit wonder. Um, it's nice, but it's it's not game changing, and that's what's actually blown a lot away. A lot of people have been blown away by Supercell because they've got three games that are all hits. You know, they're all in the top ten grossing in the world, um, and that's not easy to do. But that's what you need to think about doing. You need to have a portfolio because no game will, is going to last forever. <laughs> so why are investors investing in the game sector? They're looking for big bubbles, and that's where you know, in terms of exit valuation, it's a uh, the bigger the bubble, the bigger the valuation was at exit or IPO. So, you know, in Europe, in the past 15 years, there's been about $18 billion of value created. Um, and there's going to be a lot more. There's a huge amount of talent here. So what do we like to see? 
intelligence, insight, and passion. You know, we don't want to back people who are doing this for the money. We're looking to back people who really want to make the best games in the world. You know, people who just just do it. You know, they're not moaning about things. They're not taking forever to make decisions. They just get on with it. You know, low latency ideas. You know, they just they keep things simple and they just move on. Um, they iterate fast speed. Um, you know, these days you can test everything, and you should be testing everything. Um, curious. I mean, you, you, they, there are people that are at, teams that are asking themselves questions about you know what is the data that we need to know? What do we not know that we need to find out? I mean, and understanding what you're good at, what you're not good at, and the portfolio approach, like I said, was super so. You know, we like to understand why people like it. So, you know, if you've got a game that you like, well, tell me why. You know, why did you come up with that idea? Uh, did you test it? Did you test the concept? Uh, have you done any user testing? Um, good chemistry teams. We back great teams. And people that just get on with each other because you're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times. So why are we doing this? You know, we've all worked at big companies and, you know, we thought, you know, there's a huge amount of talent in Europe, but there's not enough capital. And we just saw a, a massive opportunity because we're, we're the only ones that are really doing this. Um, we've had some success. Besides Supercell, we, you know, people on my team are in Playfish, we're all in Unity, in Natural Motion. And we love it. I mean, I'm having fun every day. So what should you do? Get excited. And, Make some games. Um, video games foster the mindset that allows creativity to grow. We're big believers in that. If you want to contact me, there's my info. Thank you. Can you take any questions? Can I take any questions? Um, unfortunately, the yeah, schedule is okay. very tight, um, but oh. he'll, be, Paul will be here afterwards, yeah. and if not, I'm sure you can find him at GDC. Um, so apologies for that. Thank you very much, Paul, for that wonderful presentation. Um, now we're going to begin the pitches. Uh, we'd like